It's the Six Fix Podcast with Digit Murphy coming to you from Toronto, the T.O. Hey, I'm here with my co-host, Lisa Haley. Lisa, what's going on? We're finally in Toronto together. How are you? I'm doing great, Ditch. Thanks. Uh, pretty excited to get going here and uh, looking forward to a great chat. So I hear you're on a little bit of a quarantine. Let's tell, tell me about it because I guess you have this great opportunity that you're doing right now. So before we get to Sam, let's talk about you for a sec. Oh, geez. Yeah, sure. Uh, I took a job as the head coach of the Hungarian women's national team. So I just got back from a, a camp over there. It's my third trip over. I uh, started back in July. So um, in the midst of a pandemic on top of all of that. So uh, yeah, as I said, I've been over three times. I just got back on the weekend. So <laughs> I'm on day seven of 14 quarantine. You know what that's all about? Um, <laughs> It never ends. It never ends, this quarantine, this COVID thing. It's crazy. But, you know, at least it's cool. I get to see you from across the highway because we're both in Toronto right now. Pumped to be here. I love the T.O. Uh, I'm in my own kind of little bubble here. I live over in, uh, where the heck am I? I'm near Summerhill, Summerhill, Summerhill Markets. I'm in Rosedale. I don't know, but I love it. I'm happy to be here. Um, so, Let's talk about our guest today, though. And Lisa, you know, you and I, we're going to go back and forth with a bunch of guests. So everyone's going to know that Lisa is the uh, head coach at Ryerson uh, College or University. I don't even know. University? Ryerson University. Ryerson. Yeah, she's like a stud. She's like total, like Team Canada. She's awesome. Like, I'm so lucky. We are so lucky to have her on this podcast. But we're going to talk about you again soon. But Sam Ridgewell, <laughs> you are the guest of honor today. Hello, and hello. Sammy <laughs> plays for us on the T6. But uh, she's just, she's an awesome, she's a goaltender. Uh, she lives on the farm in Saskatchewan. Yep. I mean, I the other day I'm looking at her helmet. She's got a Bible verse on the back. Like she's like <laughs> such an exciting guest and I want to get right into it. So Sam, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're you're unbelievable. And, you know, you're doing some food <laughs> bank you. stuff. So why don't you take us back to uh, your the beginning of your career? And, you know, mm -hmm. don't don't be going all Digit Murphy on me and like, uh, you know, <laughs> taking an hour, but I'm sure you won't. But uh, tell us a little bit about the beginning of your career and playing for Notre Dame. Right. But before that, talk yep. a little bit about before that. Um, well, I started off playing like minor hockey, small town hockey kind of went all over the province. There's Conquest, Outlook, and Elrose. Um, those are the three main small towns that I played for, but got to give them credit because that's played lots of hockey there. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, as I got more into female hockey, I moved to playing uh, AAA hockey in Saskatoon with the Saskatoon Stars, played a couple of years there. And then um, then I went over to Notre Dame um, Got it. for my grade 12 year. And then I did a postgrad year there. So I did two years and it's called the, it was called the JWHL at the time. Right. Um, yeah. And then, I mean, that's kind of a fast forwarded version of it. I, it's good though. I want to talk about Lisa. I'm sure that you've seen uh, Sam across the uh, Hockey Canada stuff. Uh, you've watched her. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And uh, I mean, goalie is always a competitive spot for sure to try to crack any lineup. So um, coming from a small town, Saskatchewan, I, I'm, I've got questions for you as well. Mm -hmm. um, you, you ended up doing a victory lap. Is, was there a purpose behind that? Did you know where you wanted to go to school or? Yeah, so I had actually been talking to um, like Brent, um, Brent Hill and Aaron Hamlin at the time. Um, and that was with Merrimack College and um it was uh they weren't exactly sure which year they were going to start the program um and then it ended up being 2015 2016 was the first year so I had to fill one year there so um I ended up signing my senior year of high school and then knowing I would have to go back to Notre Dame for another like PG year to fill that gap year before Merrimack actually good had a program. question good question Lise yeah yeah I just want to make sure I hear this clearly so the first year of the Merrimack College program was was your first year so you were yep Pioneer there. Wow. Yeah. yeah. 
you know, that to me is a special experience uh, being part of something that's uh, growth. Mm -hmm. Tell me what that was like. Well, there's a lot of, a lot of firsts. And uh, like, I remember our first hockey game, the, the excitement behind it. I think we broke records actually for the amount of people that came to like an inaugural season home hockey game or something. I can't remember exact numbers, but I, I want to say close to like 1700 people and in our rank, it fits about 2,500. So it felt packed in there. Um, So that was exciting. And I mean, the school just treated us like gold because they they were excited to have us in there. And um, yeah, just the growth of women's sports at that school. um, It was an honor to be a part of it. And yeah, I'm excited to kind of get to do the same thing here, actually. That's awesome. I got to jump in here though, right? (laughs) That's the first year. Okay. So Digit Murphy is all about sustainability. Is it still the same is my question at Merrimack College? Is there still 1700 people? Have they uh, not quite it? as much, um, but we like consistently got 500 people on a good day. Um, so like, it, and we played her in the smaller ranks. So yep. like 500 people still made a big impact in there. Amazing. Um, yeah. But we were and, happy with our fans there. And you, and you broke supporters. records there, right? Come on. Brag well, a little bit. Lisa, we got to get these I mean, to I brag. would say set records. I don't know if there, there wasn't any records to break. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, yeah, set the bar. Toronto Six here being inaugural season for Toronto Six. You got somebody who's already walked the talk in this area, did you? Good pick. <laughs> hey, you know what? Uh, didn't you play a little bit? No, you played out in Sweden, right, last year? Talk about yeah, last that. Yeah, last season I was out in Sweden. It was good. It was really good hockey. There was a lot of girls over there that it was kind of, it was different than Toronto in the sense that I was playing with like 15-year-olds still that were going to um, go to college and actually a lot of us that had played NCAA, we immediately texted our coaches and said, you got to come watch. <laughs> so our Merrimack coach actually came and stayed with us and watched those kids. Um, but yeah, it, so it was different in that sense, but it was good hockey. A lot of those kids are either going to college or going to uh, have already gone and came back. And then there was the, like the good mix of Swedish girls too, that just chose to stay in Sweden and keep playing in that league. But it was really good hockey over there. Lisa, did you just see what she did? Like, did you see what she did by giving her coach the recruits, right? Like (laughs) how awesome of a kid is this? Because she's thinking about the future of her program at Merrimack. Like, I'm like, right, just talking to you, like, you know, we don't get to talk all the time, right? Because we're in this pandemic. So I got yeah. like eight kids on the ice. So, you know, it's not like NCAA or, or you sports, Lisa, I don't get to talk. So I'm sitting here learning about you. And I'm like, you're awesome. I keep reinforcing <laughs> the pick like, yeah, you know, she's awesome. So anyways, uh, I just wanted to say that about you. But let's Thank talk you. about you being an awesome kid, because you're in the community right now doing some awesome things with uh, Grant Mentis, with uh, Bucky. Talk about that. Lisa has to hear about this. It's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So we're actually uh, doing a lot of stuff through, it's called the Kinetics Kids um, Program or Kids Camp. Um, And because there's no kids camps kind of going on right now because of COVID, they ended up like transforming their building into more of like a an area where we'll go pick up food from the food bank, we take it back, and then we'll resort it and kind of, make grocery bins for um, an assisted living home and then we uh, take it over there there's we usually take about 80 bins at a time and take it over there and then just go door to door and whoever needs a bin we drop off a bin of there's usually a bunch of meat and milk and lots of eggs and some veggies that's what we try and mix it in there and um that is so that they don't have to go out as often at least yeah yeah, like you, you think of the state of the world right now, it doesn't matter if you're in Canada or Hungary or Brazil, like people are struggling in many, many ways, you know, yeah. financially and just, you know, emotionally. So, man, wow. Right. Yeah. Well, and I think as you say that emotionally too, like even just like when we knock on their door, just seeing them light up, like I think they just enjoy us coming door to door and like chatting for that couple minutes too. Yeah. And everybody's Honestly. super grateful. They're always like, oh, God bless. Like, please come back. Like, see you next week. Like, we love having you. Yeah. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable, Lisa. Like, these kids, like, and this is what I always say about women's women athletes. And I'm not saying that men don't do it, right? But I always have to put my women athlete advocacy hat on. If a tree falls in the woods and no one hears it, does it make a sound? I say that all the time. <laughs> and sometimes I feel like all these good deeds that these athletes are doing are going unnoticed. So we're happy to sit 
to to be on this podcast right now, being the champion of advocating for women athletes like you. So I'm here to say thank you very much, Sam, from my lips to your ears, and I hopefully speak on behalf of of uh, Lisa to say that because this is this is so awesome that you can do this for the community. So thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I want people to and can you say the name of the organization again because we want to make sure we get a shout out to them. Um, it's called Kinetics Kids okay. Association, I believe. Association Camp. Can't remember the last word, but, and, but Kinetics. That, isn't that related to uh, Bucky's aunt? Like, who is she? That's yeah, the woman. Let's talk about her. Yeah, her business owner. Yeah. Let's talk about her. Tell me a little bit about her if you don't know anything about her. Um, well, I, I've gotten to know her a little bit more um, just working with her every Tuesday doing this volunteer program, but <laughs> she is a worker. She's always on the phone all pretty much the entire time we're there talking to food banks and it's called food rescues and lots of times she'll actually send us out and i mean you got to experience it yourself all the almonds because i got some we'll almonds. Do food rec food rescues and one of them was like a thousand pounds of almonds and um Unbelievable. so she's always on the phone trying to better the community and the camp and yeah she does a lot for the community of brampton and we gotta get ryerson involved with her lisa you gotta give her name over there we need to help each yeah. other as women right you're reading my you're reading my thoughts right now <laughs> group meeting last week just talking about it's exactly like that like how can we make a difference right now and food drive was at the top of the list so hey sam make sure we follow up after this yeah I, definitely love to make that connection i mean ryerson's in the middle of downtown toronto and uh, i know there's a lot of inner city youth and families that could you know use whatever little push we can give them exactly and i know she does have a second kinetics building i think closer to toronto so maybe that's yeah. maybe that is you a know, possibility. And, mm -hmm. and the, I can't help but say this, guys, like we don't do this enough as women and network and use our opportunities that or our platforms that we have. And that's kind of what when we came to the Toronto Six, what we wanted to bring. We wanted to bring sports into the conversation of community engagement, educational engagement, inclusion initiatives. So. What we're doing right now is part of not only what T6's um, mission is about, but it should be about everyone's initiative, in my opinion, using sports as a platform for life and making a difference. So um, I'm glad that we had this conversation about that. Let's, let's take this a little bit, though, Sam, mm -hmm. to doing good in the community. I want to talk about what's on the back of your helmet, <laughs> the, Christian, the Christian value set that you grew yeah. up with weren't you homeschooled can you tell us about that because i think that christian value set the way you're raised continues to help you give back and i'm not saying everyone has to be a christian or muslim whatever like you need to have a value set right that you bring to the table and everyone's included but i want you to talk about yours mm -hmm. i wasn't actually homeschooled just to put that out there um, okay. no um but yeah like my family just has always grown up um being Christian and going to church. And, um, and then the, the latest post like that crossing crown on the back of my helmet that, yeah. that was posted, that actually is tied to, it's called Lutheran Collegiate Bible Institute, which is where my mom has taught my entire life. So I kind of grew up there. Like ever been, that was my babysitting. Like she would just take me there during school, after school. And I'd hang out there all night long while she was coaching and, so I've just grown up loving that place. And um, that verse actually came from one of my coaches. Um, his name is Mr. Adelman. Um, he said that a lot. And he, he always, he called us all champions and just did anything he could to motivate us. But at the end of the day, you always had to give everything back to God because, um, I mean, he's why we're so successful. And uh, I kind of took that with me through Merrimack. And it was a good reminder those four years. Just yeah. every time I'd like put my helmet on, I'd, briefly look at it and now that's I wanted amazing. to bring it to Toronto too. That's amazing. And Lisa, I'm mm -hmm. sure you have some stories about, you know, some of the players on your team and the core values they, you know, they espouse because I think it's so important that everyone has those set, that set of values. Yeah, absolutely. And I may have missed it, Sam. What mm -hmm. is the, uh, what is the verse? I, I got the, uh, like, it's, crown, but. it's Isaiah 40, 31. Um, do you want me to read it? Read it. it out loud. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's, I'm just, I'm just going to bring it up just so I get every single word correctly. Cause it, 
It was I know, funny. but so it's it was- those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary and they will walk and not be faint. So like to me, it's kind of, you can like think of it as an athletic, yeah, kind of more athletic type verses in the Bible, which is why I love it so much too. I mean, how big is visualization to anybody's game? And if you try to mm-hmm. visualize what's being said in that phrase, it, I think it puts you in a pretty powerful mindset. And exactly. Yeah, Ditch, to your point uh, with Ryerson, we have a, a, a huge group of athletes involved with a program called Athletes in Action. And it's. Oh, yeah, I was in that too. <laughs> there you go. You know, yeah. and it's just about, you know, again, finding, uh, you know, a, a higher spirit or however you would like to describe it. And. Yeah you know, having faith and, and drawing on that faith for, for your own self-confidence. So yeah, that was a big exactly. part of a lot of, the, a lot of uh, girls on our team. And I think it's, it's global in terms of what that organization does. So yeah, definitely. I know it definitely helped me when like, cause I had a couple uh, injuries and concussions. So when I was coming back from that, I kind of, I would really focus on that verse a lot and, and other verses as well, but I really just kind of put it in God's hand and just asked him to help me be confidence like getting back on the ice and just to help me yeah return to normal play and like get my mental game back and yeah a couple a couple of things that that I want to I want to transition over to that you said and I think it will uh help other young athletes right Mm -hmm. you you talked a little bit about what you needed in your mindset Mm -hmm. I mean I just I feel like if you could give some tips to some of the younger players out there like you said like when you were going through adversity you thought about Mm -hmm. that can you talk about how you yourself get through adversity beside for for the bible uh verse and also lisa at some point i want you to talk about some of the things that your players use to to get through these situations um i mean a lot of it is like the self-talk and for me like the more more like the cheesy, like the don't, don't think that like, don't say the word can't like that stuff doesn't quite work for me. Cause as soon as I just think that, then I kind of reverse it almost. Um, yep. so for me, it was more just taking it back to practices. Like if I got scored on or I would be like, okay, it's fine. I get scored on practice. And then I make the next save. Like I'm fine. Like I can do it in the game too. But the toughest one for me actually is playing in games where I didn't get a lot of shots. So I would constantly be reminding myself, like, I try not to look at the clock, but then if I did, I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't gotten a shot in like nine minutes. Like, I'm not really in it. But then I would, I would just like call myself and remind myself, like, it's like, okay, there's times where I don't get a shot for five, six, sometimes 10 minutes in practice if they're busy doing something else and I'll still make the first, like that next save. So I'm fine. I do it in practice. I can do it in a game. You're like, snap out of it. You're telling yourself, (laughs) snap out of it. It doesn't matter. Right. Oh my God. That's awesome. Lisa, how about you? Like, do some of your players use some tricks that you can share? Because we might have some, like, younger listeners on here, especially mm-hmm. goalies, Sam, you know? Like, how oh, do we yeah, help the definitely. kids? How do we help the kids, Lisa? Well, geez, I don't know how many young goalies I can help. Uh, <laughs> but I have a twin sister who was a goalie, so I think she probably tested her methods on me more than anything. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think for me, and, and Didge, I know you can speak to this too. It's, you know, for me, it's how you talk to yourself. And, and I think our players... You know, we're females. We tend to be harder on ourselves, uh, you know, and doubt ourselves. It's, it's uh, you know, for me, the, the best tool is to constantly remind yourself how great you are and don't be scared to be great. And, you know, hey, everybody's going to make mistakes. Mistakes yeah. are, are life. Nobody's perfect. It's how you respond to it. So, yeah. you know, I think our players are, are reminding themselves of that. I know we are reminding our players of that all the time. Hey, it's going to go wrong. It's how you react mm-hmm. to it. You know, yeah. that's all that matters. So thousand percent, you know, and I, I remember it makes, makes me think about my China experience. You know, our whole methodology behind it was May Wenti, no problem, no problem. And the other one was enjoy, have fun. Like you feel like as a coach, sometimes you beat down these players and they need to be built up, you know, and Sam kind of has been in my practices and she's just kind of shaking her head because, you know, she's like, what is going on here? Because it's just different, right, Sam? I mean, it's a little crazy. It's a lot of fun. There's energy and all of a sudden I'll be like change something right in the middle I'm like yeah I don't like that let's go back you know like it's just you have to make it fun and 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 safe especially for women would you agree you guys yeah definitely definitely your practices are a lot of fun and I think they keep us on our toes too because like you said you change a lot so it's kind of like what what are we doing now yeah (laughs) it keeps us all focused 
<laughs> right. And, you know, seriously, right, Lisa? Like, it's like, if it's the same thing, wah, 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 you're like, okay, when it, you're looking at the clock, we look up and we're like, oh my God, 15 minutes is over. I look at Gary. I'm like, where the heck did the time go? Right. Yeah, and I'm I like, know. huh, Lisa? I, I think that fun factor is critical, you know, and I'm the first one to say it. I got my game face on a lot. I bring a bit of a more serious approach But my leadership group knows that. And they, you know, they know how to, how to get the fun out when it needs to happen. So um, you know, and I think that's the strength of a team and the strength of the staff is everybody can complement each other. But yeah. I guarantee you, you learn best and you develop more when the fun factor is high where it needs to be. Can't be too far goofy. Obviously, we got some work to get done, but you know, having that having that fun side of it, that's now it feels like you want to be there and it doesn't feel like work. Right. Everyone See, that, work that's hockey. everyone wants to play hockey. Right. That's why we're uh, that's why we're on the podcast together. You see, she's the straight man and I'm the color. Right. How are we doing that? Uh, well, um, I, I think uh, I, I let's just let's just get to the T6 piece of this, Sam. Um, yeah, you know, talk about talk about the team. Like, you know, we got so many of our fans have this like what is going on in covid? Mm -hmm. How are you guys doing things like just talk about your experience so far with the six and your teammates and how that's all going like God, just go, Sam. It's it's your show. <laughs> However you want to take it. What are the coaches like? <laughs> yeah, they're not bad. They're not bad. They're OK. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, the coaches are great. They've been running really good practices kind of a mix of uh, the, yeah, they know when to have fun, but I mean, even the drills where we're supposed to work, they still know how to make those drills fun. Um, especially for me, I really like the drills that we do. Yeah. Um, but as for the team, like it's tough. We're kind of split into two groups. So I've really gotten to know the group that I've been practicing with really well. And, um, we cut, we kind of, we are the younger crew. Um, so there's a lot of inside jokes about that too. Um, but it's been lots of fun and I'm excited to actually finally, hopefully soon get on the ice with everybody else so we can all get to know each other a little bit better. Um, because like a lot of people don't know that we're split because Toronto has these restrictions mm -hmm. where we can only have 10 people on the ice. So luckily we only have a, a limited roster. Like mm -hmm. the, the NWHL lets you have 20 um, Lisa. And we decided at the beginning to have a smaller roster um, and with the Babstock trade, we only have 17 players and we end up usually because one is one player is usually out for whether it's like, uh, a quarantine, you know, <laughs> like one of our players right now, like is kind of third level exposed. So they have to like stay home. It's been working out where we have eight players and two coaches on the ice, which mm -hmm. has been really cool. But um, they're also, and Sam, you can speak to this. They're working out outside, which I'm like, good. It's adversity. It's cold, it's wet, it's rainy. We're going to have we're going to be better because of that. But talk a little bit about that, Sam. That's kind of a, a gong show a little bit when you think about it. I think I've I've learned enough from that adversity. I think I'm ready to go back in, <laughs> indoors right? now that it's getting it's chilly. Colder, but it, it's actually been fine. The only there was one day where the metal bars were almost too cold to pick up, but other than that, it's actually been we've made do with it and yeah, it's important to get a good lift in. So it was good that Jesse and um, everybody there was willing to bring everything outside for us and still run workouts for us. And it's Le very important. Yeah, Lisa, you have to see it, right? You go with, you go to York University and you look to the right and they got all these lights on us. He's got a tent out there. If it's raining, there's these bars. They got music blaring. People are like, what is that over there? So it's it's pretty yeah. cool. We're all and, in our and, sweatpants, yeah. hoodies and toques. And yeah, they're freezing their butts off. So yeah. uh, I don't know, Lisa, you know, talk a little bit about that. Have your, have your players ever had to do that? <laughs> You know what? I think we're pretty spoiled with our setup at uh, Ryerson. The old Maple Leaf Gardens, pretty sweet, uh, pretty sweet gym in there. So uh, we have to follow the ten-person rule as well, but we are allowed mm -hmm. indoors. But you know, Sam, uh, I gotta ask. You're from Saskatchewan, for goodness sakes. I mean, uh, you know, cold. Us, <laughs> us here in Toronto, we don't know cold. You guys. You probably had a t-shirt and shorts on everyone else. Felt <laughs> on, so. I was one of the ones with the fewer layers, but um, what did you say? Sorry, how's Toronto treating you? Yeah, how's Toronto treating you? It's been good, actually. I mean, I'm kind of glad I'm here right now and not back home. It's like minus 30 with like two feet of snow there right now. So and they're uh, training outside in Saskatchewan, too, I bet. Yeah, I hear that. I heard that. Yep. You're getting soft playing in Toronto. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Should take the team to Sask for a couple of weeks. Well, hey, we I got to ask you a question, though, about that. Is it true that like it's this straight line, like from the airport, like 
to the main, you know, main drag and you just drive like, like three hours and then there's a stop sign. Is that true? Yeah, I could probably explain how to get there from my farm. It's one, two, three right turns and then you take, then you're in the city, but that's like an hour. Like you drive 30 minutes, turn right, drive 30 minutes, get onto the freeway in the city and then you're, you can see the Unreal. airport signs. So yeah, like we, usually at night we can see the, like the, the lights from the city Unbelievable. From our farm, yeah. Talk about the farm. We didn't talk about the farm. Tell yeah, us about the farm. The farm. Skiers, I bet. I bet there's not a lot of downhill skiers. So. <laughs> fast, no, we have our one little hill, but mostly people go to Alberta for it. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about uh, the farm. What do you farm? want to know about the farm? I need to talk. I need to. Talk, I need to get the farm in. Start to step on you guys. <laughs> you know, tell us about the farm. The farm. Well. It's, I have to give most of the credit to my grandparents and uh, my dad and my uncles because they do most of the farm work and, and that allows the rest of us to go run off and play sports. But this quarantine, we actually all finally uh, put in our hours and all of us kids almost took over. Um, but yeah, we'd go check all the baby calves and the, we have this thing called branding where you, I won't really go into too many details, but that's where you tag all the calves and just give them their shots and stuff like that. So that's fun. And because of there was a social or there's a gathering limit, we could only have like immediate family and a couple other guests. So all of the people that usually come in rope couldn't. So we hand caught every calf and Whoa. pulled them out ourselves. So it was, it was a good workout that day. Um, you had, it was fun. You had to go around and catch them in the pens? Yeah, like we took our ropes and we went and like roped them on foot and then we would drag them out. Usually the horse drags them out. <laughs> wow, you have to be strong for that. <laughs> yeah. You just got yourself a great team building idea, Ditch. I know. Let's go. <laughs> let's get the, that let's be funny. fly out. Instead of cattle, just get the ropes oh. out and. Oh my God. Yeah, seriously, see who can do it. Yeah. I can't even imagine that. Sam. But yeah, we have about, I think we got it close to about 400 head of cattle and got to have about 20 to 30 horses i don't know an exact number and then wow uh, i think about six thousand acres of land six thousand acres yeah like majority of it i'd say probably half of it is used i guess pasture land and then the other half my dad and grandpa uh, farm either for feed or for like wheat and stuff like that yeah are you gonna go out and take over the farm ever you should I don't know. I'd always said no, but then, but now that we all experienced it yeah. for months on end, now we're actually kind of like, oh, I'm not just going to give it away that easily. Right. It's fun. Like, what about, you know, that yeah. lady on the um, cooking channel uh, mm -hmm. reminds me of that. Do you remember that there's a woman out, out West? I can't remember who she is and her husband, she's like the cook and mm -hmm. they have the kids on the farm. Uh, I can't remember what her name is, but it reminds me of that. You guys have that kind of mentality, but you should be as the woman, you should be the owner of that thing. That's what I think. That should be a goal of yours if you want to do it. Right. Yeah. Well, I'd say it's pretty equal. Like it's mostly my grandparents land and then my dad's and I mean my dad and my mom's, but my dad is usually the one out in the tractor. Do you, but you could drive it. Do you have any brothers? Yeah. I have one little brother. Okay. So yeah, maybe 15? it's a yeah. joint venture. Anyways, yeah, look true. at me. I'm, I'll take I'm, it over. Yeah, I'm always thinking about the business aspect. You know, Lisa, I don't know. I got to shut my brain off sometimes. Yeah. Well, actually, most of us, um, I know my sister asked for Christmas. She wants a cow. And <gasps> she wants to start that type of an investment. That's what she asked for for Christmas. <laughs> How much does a cow cost? Mm, a lot, right? Probably like a thousand bucks. Yeah. <clears throat> I saw it yeah. on um, another show. Uh, <clears throat> what's the one out with <clears throat> Kevin Costner? Do you guys ever watch Netflix? Uh, yes, but I don't think it's I like the oh, I can't remember. I have like, you know, senior moments, but uh, <laughs> they have like, you know, horses they basically buy and they're like ridiculous, like, I don't know, 15,000 for a horse. I'm like, I had no yeah. idea a horse cost that much or whatever it was yeah, like ridiculous expensive. amounts of money. Yeah. Wow. And then you got to pay for feeding them and everything. So you're paying a thousand bucks, but then you pay like probably 5,000 to feed them. It's yeah. an expensive hobby Yeah. I know. or whatever. I mean, we don't have to buy our feed luckily, but. I mean, you still probably end up putting that much money into farming the feed and like producing it. Yeah. Well, we're going to wrap mm -hmm. it up. Uh, let's, uh, let's get the, the last <laughs> word from you, uh, Sam. You know, like if you had to tell your fans of the Toronto Six anything about mm -hmm. the Toronto Six and why they should come out and tell us all about that. Well, as of right now, <clears throat> I'd say we're... Oh, sorry. <clears throat> 
it's a fun group of girls to support and um <laughs> even just practicing with them I'm like wow like this is a good hockey team we've got and that's only half of them and then you put all of us together and I feel like that's like twice as strong um but yeah just a hard-working group of girls um that it would be awesome if people I mean once people can like come out and support us but they've all even the fans that uh, we've had on social media it's been great seeing their support retweeting stuff and like posting pictures of the jerseys that they've bought um we love to see it so definitely keep posting what you've been doing for us it's been awesome yeah and uh lisa uh any final words that you want to say to the group the audience anything yeah you know absolutely give give these uh these hockey players a chance they are unbelievably talented mm -hmm. for sure and uh, you may have not seen women's hockey before, maybe only saw it on TV, till you see it live and you see the speed and the skill of the game and how mm -hmm. professional these players take it. Uh, I, I know once you see your first game, it won't be your last game. So mm -hmm. anybody that's out there listening, come and check it out. I know you won't be disappointed and uh, we'll have another fan for the six. Yeah, baby. Well, uh, you know, I'm just gonna say for uh, the Six Fix podcast, this is Digit Murphy with Lisa Haley, Sam Ridgewell, uh, come out, watch the six. We're fast, we're furious, we're fun, we're exciting. Um, bye bye.